Alright y'all, in the last video, we discovered that there was like a bubonic, there was like a bubonic plague or whatever going on with this tank. I mean, it's solid. A little bit of rush, and I need to kind of clear it up. But the ugly part was the inside. Um, I don't know if y'all remember the videos, but yeah. So... It's not 100% unusable. But like I told y'all, I was just choosing not to. I was choosing not to deal with it. But it might have a new home. I start to move that. So I won't go to total waste. Uh, yeah, I told you. Just like all the other swaps, Cutlass, Cutlass got a new tank. <clears throat> Cutlass it got a new tank. CT and got a new tank. And it's all new, all new metal. And all of the boys. So it's only right. It's only right. Oh yeah. And two though got me to take up on the head. So it's only right. And our Project X get a new tank too. Part number a little different. FT5167, but yeah. That's it. That is it. Exactly what we need. Get the RS, get our center unit. Center unit in our pump. Got the center unit right there. Part number FG10. FG10 Fox Trot. It's like deja vu, man. Doing it all over again. And then y'all know we got the Kimzo pump. Down out there somewhere. One of these boxes, there you go. They got uh, accessories, attachments, whatever you want to call them. Put them right there to the side. And then we got the pump itself. I think it was in this. I took it out last time. Oh, yeah. You got the pump itself. Kimzo. So, trying to get that one fired up. I uh, also went ahead and bought the fuel injection clamps to put on the, uh, to attach this pump to the center unit so that we won't have the same mishap. The same mishap that we had in the colors where the to, uh, pump came off of the center unit. So. That pump, I guess, is a little stronger than the SP1115 that we used to run in. So, so, uh, yeah, that part. So, yeah, let me go on and get it together. Um, and then I'll show you what else we got. Let's go be going with the fuel system for this here. All right, so as you can see here, man, the first part, I guess if you're looking at it from the, this side here, starting at the fuel tank, or step, starting at the fuel rail, so starting at the fuel and all the way back. Um, something different that we didn't always done before, we didn't always ran the truck intakes with the return style. Uh, little connector or 
something similar into either rubber hose or more recently we've done the uh, nylon braiding. So we're going to do the nylon braiding. Uh, we're going to chop as many as many AM fins as possible. Uh, so I'm going to get this connected here. snug on there, screws in, uh, then you don't, it doesn't require you to have any, you know, special tools to get the fuel lines off in the event that you need to disconnect it, it's unscrewing, so from there, uh, probably have to go with like a 90, a 90 or 45, these are all straights, but yeah, now to my 10, I'll probably just do a 90, Put it boom straight back. You know what I'm saying because on the other ones, the truck fuel rails it goes that point straight back for whatever reason they got this one pointing out to the side. So we're gonna put a 90 on it, put a 90 on it, and then send it on back down behind or whatever for the fueling from there. So all right, fuel sending units. Uh, we got it all put together. We got our fuel injection clamps on there, tighter than giraffe. Woo, woo. And that way we don't have another incident like we do had in colors. Um, about to get ready to go ahead and put those on there or heat, heat shrink them down. And then we are good for the sending units and the power to the pump. We got our sock on there. And uh, everything is good. Everything's good. So I don't know what that crazy effect is. I think there's something going on with the camera. I might have to go end up going to the Apple store or just filming with the wider or the zoomed in one. It don't do it with the zoomed in one. And it don't do it with that one. But that one, uh, it stopped now, but yeah. So yeah, fueling. I feel like I said, fueling set up. We got our uh, feed. Uh, the vents and the return. Um, usually before I had taken this off and I'm probably gonna do the same thing again, uh, but I need to evaluate exactly what it is that I have under the car first before, cause I mean, I might go back into that line there and then maybe splice it further up, you know, utilizing as much of the stock stuff that we can i mean it was fuel injected from the factory so i'm pretty sure that maybe uh that portion right there can hold it uh however i do know that it was not the the pressure was not as high as the ls motor which is 55 to 60. Uh, so that may cause an issue we may have to change it. I don't know of a lot of people that do, but I believe I have had issues post uh, with running the original, original hosing and stuff, man. So I really just like to, other than the metal line, man, I used, I like to just put all new, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's return hose, pressure hose, whatever, because it's about to be under a whole different scenario of you know fuel pressure and power and everything for the line so uh let's go up under the car and then see what the situation is looking like down there all right and we back um 
I haven't been on the car yet, but I want to show y'all this. I had to find the fittings and everything for it. I was like, let me finish this so I can paint the whole picture or whatever. So uh, these are labeled for you. Uh, so basically you have an in, which is your inlet uh, for your fuel. And then you got a return line, which is gonna be that one. This one is a 3.8 for the feed and it's a 5.16 for the return. Uh, I bought the kit off of eBay so I can make it to where it's AM fittings on there and I'm good to go. So all I have to do is pretty much uh, mount this and then hook up my AM lines and I'm good to go. Um, so yeah. All right, but yeah, all these fittings and stuff, man, I'm, I looked and I searched on eBay and yeah, from the time that I got the car, man, I started started grabbing little stuff here, little stuff here, little stuff there, little stuff here, little stuff there. So uh, now it's just coming to the point where we're putting it all together. So I got all the parts that I need. So, um, all right, now let's go in the car so I can show you. Um, and we can get the plan for the actual rest of the fuel system. And then that's when we'll bring in and we'll address these and these possibly all right so here we are back under the car um i'm gonna have to trace the wires for the fuel pump all the way to the front because <clears throat> i'm used to having to run it all the way up there myself so uh once i do get it plugged in yeah, the wire for the actual power to the pump, pump the primer or whatever. I'm gonna have to trace it all the way back up front, so we know exactly what we're looking at. Uh, as we moving forward, looking into what we got for our fuel. Oh, uh, so you got your feed, as you can see. Um, uh, and I might just keep that fitting, honestly, I don't know, I'm thinking about it, uh, that's on the actual sending unit, maybe just in case in the future we have to, uh, do it over or something. Uh, then you got your vent, vent is not going to be under no pressure, so I'm not really worried about it doing anything to that one we'll just trace it up front make sure it's good to go uh and then the return line as you know originally i'm not sure where it runs but i know that we will have to run it a different route uh just because of the simple fact that uh The simple fact that uh, it's going it's going through that Corvette filter now. So, uh, so if we follow the lines over, I'm gonna go up and over here. If I can get y'all in here, the best I can. Ah, shit. All right. Yeah up and over and I guess it's coming back down okay yeah so you can see right there one is going that way I'm pretty sure that's the vent where's it two <laughs> okay so from the three the one that's farthest to the right, which is the vent, which is the smallest, is going over and that way. So the vent is going to be over that way, and then the, uh, the feed and the return are running right there. So being that that's so tucked, tucked so nicely away, I'm not going to fool with that. We're gonna follow that over to here, feed and return again. 
And then I think this is our magic. This is our magic moment right here. So this is where the fuel filter is. Um, unfortunately, on the older models, there was not like a regular spot where these were mounted because they were carbureted and they were not fuel injected. Luckily for us, this one is fuel injected already, although we did change the tank uh, just for the reason of it being filthy. Uh, yeah, so this right here, it, this is the moment of truth. So we can easily take our uh, filter that we have over there, uh, bolt it up here. Uh, we can shorten uh, feed. And that's the one that's the filter. The one is the feed. Uh, we can cut in here and get our feed. Uh, and then do the return. We can, we can cut it short right here. And then we don't have to worry about that anymore. Going all the way to the front. Uh, because it doesn't have to go all the way to the front to return. So that's. Is gonna be the, the plan for that. So, um, I'm not actually probably gonna run as much a in line as I thought I was. Because originally, originally I was thinking I was coming like straight from the tank off. That's what I've done in the previous. I just come off the tank and then, you know, replace most of the metal line with the hose. But this time, I think we're gonna do it a little different. So, one more time to recap. Uh, we're gonna keep that feeling for the feed. That got me a little, that got me a little concerned, but I'm guessing it's something that it was leaking and they fixed, I hope. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure they don't sell that hose no more, so we'll have to see. Uh, and then you gotta come over, and you gotta feed and return. So right over here is where we'll get busy, and we'll put, we'll cut the line for the feed. Now we'll cut the line for Cut the line for the feed, cut the line for the return. Return to go right back. Uh, we might even be able to cut it, I don't know, maybe further back here. Uh, just depending upon how we, how we choose to do it. Uh, but yeah, cut those shorter and then have our AM braided line running right there to the new filter, which has the return and the feed. And then on the front side, we'll just do an AM fitting uh, or AM line. Cause I mean, technically you could do it a couple ways. I mean, you could go kind of AM all the way to rest up. However, um, Cause I'm now I'm thinking about how. Cause I mean, if I go from hard, if I go from hard line and fitting to filter, and then you got to go back to fitting back to hard line. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. However, I don't know. It's not. It's not a bad thing, but yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to unnecessarily change anything that I don't have to. So, um, we'll keep it simple. We'll just get rid of the front and then we'll go in uh, line there since we already got that fitting. Uh, and then, yeah, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to go in. We're going to have to stick to the plan, stick to the original plan. Uh, AM fitting or a short 
There's gonna be a short run of A and hose on this side and a short run of A and hose on this side and a short run of A and hose on that return line. And then uh, at the very, 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 very front, uh, like I said, we can get rid of the return line all together. And then we'll have to put an AN fitting up there so that we can run directly from where the feed line comes out and then into the intake. And that will pretty much wrap up the fuel setup. All right, y'all, so we got the tank and center unit together. Uh, on second thought, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go straight. I think I'm gonna go straight from the center unit to the filter. I'll route it the same way up and over that part, but uh, probably keep the same return line, but for the feet, well, no. I'm gonna have to change that. Yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, we got these fittings here. Got those, those are straight, straight. These here. So these here are, let me show you. So yeah, these here, they had a compression fitting in them. So basically what we're gonna do is take, uh, this is the one for the 3 8 should have fit over that. And then the five, I got a small one with 5 16 for the return. And basically all we have to do is trim off the edge there. Trim off the edge there. And then put them compression fittings on there. I'll leave the vent as it is. Just do them two. And then we'll be able to put them. We'll just go A in straight from there. Two lines. A in line to the. Yeah. Do the two A in lines right there. Because instead of doing like a, a run, right? A little short run. And then another run, and we'll just do this straight from there. That way, if we do have any leaking issues, we know exactly where they're coming from. Uh, and then from the front, we'll do a line. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna run it all the way. <clears throat> to the front, but I might, but I definitely know from the tank to the filter, we're gonna do just two AN lines. And then we might do the, uh, for the rest of it, it might be an AN line all the way to the front. I got like 20, well, I got 20 feet here, and then I got another. So I got another 20 feet here. And then I think I got some leftover. I still gotta do the AN or uh, the transmission fitting lines. So I might, if I have to run, if I have to get some more, then I can do it that way. I'll just order some more. But I think I wanna do just do AN. I just wanna do this line all the way and call it a day. So if you haven't done this before, I'm gonna run you through it real quick. Like I said, this ain't a how-to video. I'm just showing y'all, you know, how we doing it with this one. But basically, yeah, get your little, get one of these tubing cutters. This one I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, they sell them at O'Reilly's, Harbor Freight, wherever. And you can cut those off and then put your new fittings on there. So let me get that done. I'll cut you back on. All right, so as you can see, nice clean cuts. Got the ends cut off. And then get your compression fitting. And we'll get these tightened down. Go from there. 
All right, y'all, as you can see, the Broham Project X LS Trifecta is on the grind for the first time ever. Sitting on the news, air socks and springs. Sitting just about right. I like it. I like it a lot. Got the new tank installed. So we one step closer, man. We gotta finish running the uh, fuel line to the front. And then go from there. Uh, the original fuel lines, they come out right there. So we're gonna probably either come, I don't know if we're gonna try to come through that same hole or maybe bring it up the back. On all the other swaps I've done, I brought it, well, on all the other swaps, I used the lines and I just tested the line in the front and then just went from there, so. Being that we bypassed that line, I don't know if we're gonna go up and through there, through the, try to go through the frame or just bring it up. Bring it around the back. So, the progress, progress is being made. She almost ready to go home. Still got some pieces coming in. Uh, we'll get it together. To the next one. Identify your weaknesses, make your strength. Life is all about choices. Choose wisely and productivity of procrastination. And remember that the hustle don't stop, the grind don't stop. Don't.